Okay, okay, I know I say this a lot, but this mod truly does change Bannerlord forever. This is Banner Kings and is probably one of the single greatest mods I have ever seen for Mountain Blade 2 of Bannerlord because it does something that Bannerlord is so severely lacking and it makes the campaign map have so much depth. And when I say campaign map, I mean the actual campaign itself, not the map. The map looks beautiful as is, but we have been lacking these severe, severe mechanics in the campaign map. Uh, you know, the amount of times I play the game and I'm just fighting battle after battle because there's nothing else to do on the campaign after you know however many hours i've played the game well let me tell you banner kings fills every need you could possibly want to run through a few of the features and we'll go into all of these in detail we have a brand new religions all with their own resource systems that you'll spend to give each faction certain bonuses and each religion has its own rights that it can pass that will give again said bonuses to the people who follow that religion we have a brand new education system that allows you to adopt lifestyles you'll have to learn languages to read books that will give you experience and the lifestyles give you unique perks it's really really amazing we have brand new decisions such as reforming the imperial kale radium uniting greater britannia and so much more a new innovation system that will allow you as a faction to go ahead and progress said faction giving the entire clan a massive amount of bonuses one example is that a lot of the imperial factions can really focus and innovate the way that food is produced, meaning that they'll, the Imperium will start producing tons of food and that will have a massive impact on the rest of Calradia and the economy that has been completely reworked. We have a brand new smithing overhaul in this mod, allowing you to actually craft armors, barding, shields, and ammo. All of this will take time, however, and isn't just instantly crafted. You also have to pay for the right to actually kind of use the forges of whatever city you're in, which adds in an extra cost. And is really interesting there's custom starts all of these custom starts range from being an indebted lord that means that you get no income from your city however you are already a landed lord to being a mercenary who which goes ahead and massively reduces your party morale for the first five years of the game but you get kick-started in your education and lifestyle in that aspect that again all gives you unique perks the game has unique game balancing soft caps so now that lords can't just stack up a million cities Durha of Belandia won't just steal every castle because he doesn't have the dementia limit the game has been rebalanced in AI finance and war meaning that in peacetime the AI will just go ahead and save its money and then in wartime it will be recruiting more professional armies and so much more. I haven't even mentioned the economy rebalance, the skill rebalance, the, uh, the, the brand new population system, as well as the brand new city management, village production. Yeah, and then also you have the kind of rights as well as succession laws, inheritance laws, courts and councils, knighthoods, traveling parties, settlement actions, and a lot more. I, I know that was one a hell of an intro but this mod is just so goddamn vast and awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try and run through these as they pop up in the campaign. So it's a bit more easier to understand. But I'll go ahead and leave timestamps down below in the description. So if you want to skip to any part of this video to kind of find out something specific about what Banner Kings does do, I'll leave a link to them down below in the description so you can just flick through. But this is going to be the brand new custom start. Whenever you load up into a game, this is what is going to pop up. And each of these offer a very unique beginning to the uh, campaign and something that I just think should be in the vanilla game. I mean, I think all these features should be, but this one specifically. So you can be a adventurer, which is just a vanilla start, no added troops, goods, or benefits. Then it gets a bit more interesting. You have an indebted lord that I mentioned in the intro. You start as a lord or a uh, lord in a kingdom with a lordship title. You have no settlement income, though, or influence for five years. So again, even though you start off pretty strong and you start off at that like kind of higher tier you actually don't kind of reap the benefits for a while allowing you to still kind of 
uh, I guess, feel like a noob in the game. You don't feel like you're super overpowered, which is really cool. And this is actually a great start as well, because not only does it kind of make you feel like that, it also allows you to immediately dive in to a lot of the amazing management systems that the game does have or the mod does add in when you own a settlement. Another one you can be is a gladiator. So you start with a couple of mercenaries, so some fairly decent soldiers um, and also some food and but your party size is dramatically reduced by 40% for five years this is going to be a pain in the ass however the, the kind of the start of this one is you're going to be go, going around and doing tournaments that's going to be your main focus so party size isn't as uh, as a big of an impact and you start with the gladiator lifestyle um which is very nice. If you progress this, you'll get some really good bonuses. And each of these offer their own unique start, uh, which is very cool. Um, but yeah, for example, we'll just start as an indebted lord for now. And look at that, you even get a little bit of an intro right off the bat. When you first load up the game as well, you'll get this massive dump of information. You can click on each and every one of these and they'll give you a lowdown. So again, if this does all seem like a bit much, you can just take your time and read through all of this. But I always say the best way to learn anything is just to go in and and start playing and you'll pick it up after a little while we also have brand new religions as well you can kind of find out a bit more about all of these religions right here you can kind of click on them um, and get the information about them so as we just talked about religions let's take a look at them so there are several faiths in calradia more are planning on being added but for now we have four ranging you know each of them have their own backstories actually besides the uh, the cancellus uh, but again i'm sure you know kind of the law background will get added it still has bonuses and negatives and you'll be gaining a special resource called piety and you can see it right down here your piety um, and this will go ahead and increase and decrease as you play um, and you'll be able to spend that on performing certain rights you also have schools as well so when you do progress you can go ahead and gain these bonuses in the religion and also pass rights as well so these rights again will give you um will give you certain bonuses and they also have their own laws as well following so again each of these are very diverse and you can really kind of min max your character to get some very awesome bonuses you know for example uh right here this ancestral spirit bonus if you get this bonus in forest battles ability to recruit forest bandit parties under 20 men into your own party and it's just like a really nice like kind of immersion uh ability but that's very very cool um for example right here each season you gain renown for each title part of the southern empire um again really specifying that and settle stability uh, stability is increased and you can also do uh rights as well you can execute traitors uh, that will give you bonuses and also doctrine as well which are a bit more and you can see the virtues of said religion and everybody who is part of that religion as well so you can see religions are very in-depth and i love the way that every one of these features does ties in to one another the next thing we have is the education system so as i said there are now seven languages you can learn for example you can find them all here and you'll be learning these through finding uh, tutors as well as books i believe that will help to teach you certain religions you can find these in stores and taverns etc um so it shouldn't be too hard to grab that and by reading these books you'll gain focus points skill points and everything else which will go ahead and apply over on this left hand side you're also as we've been talking quite bigger really actually you'll be able to apply to these uh, lifestyles and each of these lifestyles will give you certain bonuses and you'll be able to progress each of these lifestyles i believe four times and you can do two at the same time i believe or maybe it's only one at the same time but it, yeah it contains two skills and these will give you bonuses the further you progress them in certain areas um for example i'm sure if you're a gladiator you'll be gaining extra traits that will make you better at, at athleticism and riding which will help you in tournaments and uh yeah give you other other perks and again that's such a cool system we also mentioned about decisions these are pretty large scale where you have stuff that is for example uniting greater britannia or reforming the imperial caradian empire or just founding a kingdom yourself to just recruiting a companion you can send off and try and recruit a companion of a specific type uh, which is a cool system i really really like that or requesting a council position from your lord which we'll get on to in a second so the court system again there is a brand new awesome court system here you can basically request this from 
from your lord and then you also have a court system inside of your own clan as well so it's kind of kingdom based and also cl uh, clan based uh, but yeah if I was to request I would be given one of these positions hopefully if Derhart liked me uh, and these range from several things you'll be gaining money for being in charge of these positions and they'll give certain bonuses to the empire as well as to yourself so you're going to want to try and gain a position here as as much as you can because they are really good you can see for example the chancellor gives you settlement loyalty vassal limit and also uh, disagreement impact as well so you're just not going to get hit too hard with any disagreements that you do run into it's going to improve improve increase your administration costs but you know hopefully uh, that's going to be worth it and you can see the privileges as well mediocre wage and also gives you some influence um, and do any of these they all just give influence and yeah so for example the clergyman gives you this as well a position that may only be filled by clergymen or clans of the kingdom's faith which is kind of a cool position uh, and then again they give certain bonuses like piety daily to the clan um, and also to the kingdom the next thing we have is innovations and as i said in the intro this is something that will progress the longer the game goes on and obviously the faction leaders will have to do stuff as well to progress this the ai does do this which is cool to see basically these will be unique to every faction and each faction will have to go ahead and push these forwards but you can see some of the ones for the imperium so they have heavy plow this will increase farmland coverage again that ties into the new settlement management system they'll be able to improve farmland at uh, acreage as well as doing public works and I'm going to enable infrastructure more effectively improve construction uh, improve the wheelbarrow which will allow them to uh, soup up and pimp their wheelbarrow to give them more product efficiency and also increase product efficiency through blast furnaces so as you can see the Imperium are very much about that food and uh, productivity ma making them very rich and as I said earlier remember that each of these clans do have expenses income they buy workshops and caravans specifically specifically uh, like the player does now so that's all going to come into play and, and kind of determine how many soldiers they can actually field in a war and for how long they can field these soldiers and these will basically kind of dramatically t determine the, the the wealth of a nation and that will actually matter uh, which is very very cool and as you can see as well that we do have uh, prosperity inside of settlements so uh, we'll go into this in detail when we actually dive into the product management stuff but right now you can see that every pro all the prosperity of a settlement is being affected by a whole range of different mechanics that you don't normally see okay now let's move on to city management so I just teleported over as Derhart, so we can basically see this and move into Sargot now. So there are several ways to look at this now. We have the building the system that hasn't changed dramatically. There are definitely some stuff that has been reworked around, but overall, this is relatively the same. Uh, you can also apply a governor just like you can in vanilla and look at all the settlements and stuff. But where it really is interesting is when you dive into the Banner King system. Right here, you can look at your Dementia. So I'm looking at the buildup of Saga, and I can see the population of the city. I can see the upper class, the working class, the serfs, and also the slaves. And each of these will have completely different effects on the settlement. Obviously, the more serfs we have, the more, uh, the quicker we get to recruit more soldiers. The craftsmen, of course, affect the economy and how much money you get. Each of these classes also pay a certain amount of tax as well. And the upper class are obviously really good for noble troops and other stuff like that. When you dive into the economy tab, you can see stuff like the amount of slaves you have, the merchant's revenue, the product efficiency, and you can adjust the trade, uh, the trade uh, policy as well to kind of, I guess, affect your population growth. For example, is population growth on here? I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, population, population growth does get affected by this. You can also change some of uh, the laws as well, actually, inside the settlement. One thing I very, very much like, though, is this system right here, the satisfaction system. This basically means that your system, your, your city will be consuming resources based off of this. So the more serfs you have, the more basic kind of low tier goods, kind of thing like Anno, you'll be requiring. If you have a lot of noblemen inside the city who will be paying a lot of tax and giving you other bonuses, you're going to need to try your best to encourage uh, them resources to be filtering in because if they don't have resources, that's going to severely hamper your population growth so it really gives you this kind of feel of actually a living city and that's one of the other really interesting things i'm not sure if i can find it here anywhere 
But basically, every single city has its very own uh, attractiveness to caravans. I'm not sure if it's on this system somewhere. I actually don't know where it is, but I read it and I know it is in the game. Um, but yeah, every city does have its own attractiveness uh, to caravans. So caravans will be more likely to come to said city, providing them luxury goods, encouraging more growth, giving you more taxes, more production output. Because again, as I said, they completely revamped the economy. So having loads of craftsmen is going to make your city so much money because they're going to be producing, producing the best goods, meaning caravans are going to come in and spend loads of money. And if you have that, it's going to encourage more caravans to come to a city. And it just all works really well. So as I said, there are tons of new goods in the game and the more advanced cities will be producing these higher quality resources that will in turn be producing higher quality equipment. So right here, you can already see we've got fine beer and quality beer, uh, cracked wool, cracked hides, and then crude hides. Um, I believe there's seven different tiers or there's like four tiers and seven different resources, something along them lines, masterwork charcoal, and you're going to need this stuff to craft the best armor in the game, the best equipment. And again, so are your workshops. The better equipment that your workshops have access to, the better items they're going to be able to produce. For example, you know, if you have the best hides, you're going to be producing the best leather, uh, which will then sell for more, especially if you go to the, the poorer towns. And just all of that just works so dramatically well uh, in the game. So yeah, that is going to be the, the city management again. But we also have a system in villages as well. And the game saves. We'll, we'll head our way over to one of Derhart cities. And we'll go into this. And we will take a look at the Bannerkin system. And as you can see, you have this entire system for the villagers as well. So like military um, stuff, you can kind of focus on the militia, you can focus on the drafting, so you can be conscripting, but that's going to affect the population growth of the city and the drafting efficiency of it. There's stuff like here you could just go in and take a look at for ages. And there's also now village projects as well. So you can actually build up your villagers, which is very, very awesome. Um, you know, there's just so much to run through. Um, I think I've covered basically everything I wanted to. As I said, the actual kind of like military has also been completely revamped. So the AI will be way more passive in peacetime um, and they won't be having as large as standing armies. Um, but as soon as war does erupt, they'll then go to recruiting soldiers, but the soldiers will be higher quality because they'll be left here to be recruited so these will build up over time and because no one's recruiting them there'll be a higher tier uh, which is obviously very very cool um in indeed um oh yeah you can also yeah something else which you guys are probably very interested in is also the new smithing mechanic as well so as you can see if you go over to craft you can actually go ahead and craft all these items in the game and you can see right here it will take you actually actually time to actually produce these so if i wanted to i don't have the resources right now but if i if i wanted to uh, to actually produce these uh, you'll see that it will cost me certain resources and then it will cost me time and money to do so and the stamina is being completely rebound as well i think this has also been adjusted when you do smelt stuff um as well um i actually don't have the required material i don't have any wood right yeah cool um see so it's a very very cool system that you can really dive into and i haven't even mentioned the inheritance laws the succession laws be like really gone into detail on the courts and councils looked at knighthoods traveling parties um settlement actions as well something i can quickly look at uh, for you guys if you go to banner kings and you take an action you can actually um i think if you don't own a city and i go to a city uh, if we go over here and they go into the city um and you can see random events as well right there but you can adjust you can go to banner king you can take actions and there's normally stuff if i'm obviously i'm the king so i think it doesn't let me do it because i am the king but you can basically do actions like training the army or you can serve in the guard to gain a bit of money and run into events this mod is truly, truly amazing and definitely one well worth your time. Um, so go check it out. I, I can't praise this enough. I know this video has been kind of messy, but there's just so much to cover. I'll probably play this on a live stream where we can kind of run into a bit more detail about it. I'll leave a link to the mod DB page as well. Oh, sorry, the Nexus mod page so you can read a bit more in detail about this mod. But please, please, please go and play it because this deserves to be one of the most played mods out there because it's just awesome. And I'll see you guys in the next one.